Candle pin bowling is a New England tradition, and a sport enjoyed by both girls and boys of all ages. Across six annual tournaments, we bring together the game's finest young talent in a celebration of bright futures, big scores, and bigger smiles. We are proud to introduce the new generation of bowling with Season 10 of Candle Pin for Kids. To see old episodes and for more information, go to www.cp4k.com. Greetings from Bogey Lanes in East Brookfield, Massachusetts. Candle Pin for Kids, stop number two, alongside Dan Gauthier. I'm Rob Taylor. We have got two, a team coming right back from last event. They lost last time, they're back for more. And then we've got two rookies in this one. Should be an interesting match. Yeah, it's amazing, Rob. I mean, the team that lost last week, they hit one of the scores that was higher than we've ever seen. We couldn't believe they lost. No surprise at all, they came back as our top seed. What is a surprise is their challengers. One of the bowlers has only been bowling two weeks and they made our show. Is that a natural? Talk about being a natural, absolutely. We've got a couple of naturals in this match. So, let's meet them. And they're back. After tossing a 110 in our first event of the season, this young lady followed up with a 299 qualifying score to get another chance on our show with partner two-time international champion looking for his first tournament of champions birth it's Michaela Tortelot and Nate the Circus Fontaine challenging them a pair of newcomers starting with an 11 year old young lady with an impressive average and even more impressive accuracy she's joined by a kid who's only been bowling for two weeks and despite his inexperience he's got a raw talent that the lights are waiting to bring out it's Marissa Bowden and Cody Gerard Welcome back on Candlepin for Kids. Marissa Bowden is on lane 11. Go get him, Marissa. Bowden, she's got every vowel covered but the O. That's right, none, and I will have to check her middle lane later on. Marissa, first time on Candlepin for Kids. Michaela, not her first time, and you can see why with a great first ball there. I watched Marissa bowl a little while we were handing out candy today during the tryouts, and she, she made some nice streaks of marks. Michaela looking for her first mark of the match. She's on it. Michaela Tortola opening with a mark. This girl has been on fire lately. Look at she's a big smile. <laughs> Threw a high single earlier in the week, I believe, which was a 128. Yes. Uh, 299 today, just one pin shy of that 300. Uh, you know, she made our show last time, Rob, and she's a top seed this time. I actually think. I think she might be one of the most improved bowlers in the last year or two. She's been making our show for years, but she has really stepped up her game in the last couple of years. She made it a few times where there wasn't too much competition in her age right. group earlier on, made the show, got knocked out by some of the older kids. Now she's a force to be reckoned with in her own age group. Yeah, used to be making it by default, and now she's just kind of Marissa's waiting dominating. for her bowling balls to come back, coming all back in a pack. Gives her a chance to think about where to play this shot. If you want to aim for the three, try to cut this one over. Yeah, obviously try to be light in the 3-6 pocket if she can. A little too right. Michaela looking for two in a row. Great ball. She, of course, had four marks in a row thrown against her in her last match. That was against Sage Johnson when she threw a 110 game. Michaela did. Sage one upped her with a 113 with two of the highest scores we've seen in that age group, really, in the history of the show. Yeah, it was crazy, Rob. And we almost had something interesting happen today. I know Sage Johnson and Cole Fry. Um, who both were on the winning team, they get to come back, but they have to try out an older age group. One of our home viewers from another state sent us money to pay for them to try to move up a division and enter. That's interesting. Eric Fugatti, I believe, he did it, and Michaela drops a hammer. He's going to be wanting to sponsor Michaela next, I right, think. can he change his mind? Nice answer by Marissa Bowden. Oh, my gosh. We have been treated to some amazing bowling so far this season by the girls. We have been. Two bogey lanes ladies right now who are putting on a show for a sizable crowd. Yeah, I almost wanted to say for a second Michaela had the home house advantage and then I realized Bowden's from here too. Four bogey lanes bowlers in this match. They're all from bogey. Tough break for Marissa. That one wasn't off the head pin by much, but she gets nothing oh to show goodness. for it. Oh my goodness. We uh, saw a bunch of those at Academy last week in my league, but that's a rare leave here. She grips it a great run. Michaela looking to follow up. Oh, what a bid. Great try by Michaela. I think we're going to see the head pin slip to the right of the nine pin. Didn't miss it by much. Marissa looking for a big out, and she gets it. Awesome ball by Marissa. That's huge. The difference between five and nine, obviously. The difference from a tough box to a solid one. So 18 the difference, but Marissa's throwing a good ball up there. We have a lot of Bogey Lanes contestants today, didn't we? We did. All of these kids are, and we've got two more in the next one, I believe. Marissa tossed that. a 288 to qualify for our show, just 11 behind Michaela. I'm impressed, Rob. I was worried that we picked these lanes 
10 and 11 aren't always the fastest lanes for some of our slower ball bowlers, some of the girls, but um, these two are hammering them. A little slow ball return on 11, unfortunately. A little bit. Marissa's got two coming back to finish her half. I think they're just getting jammed. They all come back at once. Marissa right on it. Great ball. Look at this. Oh, oh no luck did that not go? So Marissa leaves one on the end for herself. That's solid bowling by Marissa. 43 in a ball half, and you had that no luck with that quarter Yeah, Worcester. exactly. Both of them solid bowling. I, I have no idea how Michaela's shot didn't go. That ball was directly in between. You can't hit it much more perfect than that. So in this one, we have a battle of maybe polar opposites. We've got Cody <laughs> Gerard, who has been bowling for two weeks. Oh my goodness. This match was at his home house. He decided to come by and give it a shot, qualified for the show. On the other hand, we have Nate Fontaine, who is a veteran at the young age of 11. Young age of, it is 11. It is 11. He just had his 11th birthday. That's right. He's a, we were talking about what he got. Apparently he's a collector of old items, like license plates and coins. Really? So he got a lot of old license plates and old coins. Interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And an affordable gift option. Yeah. If your car's not working too well, just take the license plate <laughs> off it. Nate, on the optic pin, tough luck. That would really ruin his shot there. Tough luck. Yeah. It should be noted that, uh, what's his name? Cody. Cody did not just win by default. He actually, there were other contestants in this age group, so he bowled well. I'm wondering how he's going to react, though. I mean, two weeks bowling and you're already in a serious competition. His coach, Danielle Mann, who is beloved by all of her entire league, we had kids all over trying to say hi to her on our In the Gutter segments, but she told us as soon as he came in that keep your eye on this kid. He's only been bowling two weeks and he's been getting better every he, single week. I mean, he reaches out well. He gets the ball out there. Most of the time, they're definitely legal balls, but he's he's got the tools. I, on paper, this would look like a mismatch, right? You've got one kid who bowls 30 games a week and another one who's bowled 20 games in his entire life. you his entire life, it's true. <laughs> Nate making a great bid and he's got it. Pretty shot by Nate Fontaine. You can see why we call him the circus with a huge fist pump after that one. Now Cody looking for a big out. Ball veering a little bit right for Cody. We'll see if he's able to make the adjustment. Thing we can pay attention to with Cody is just, you know, you're watching the future. I'm sure we're going to be talking in season 11 and 12. We'll probably see him more and... A lot of these fantastic 11-year-olds will move up in age group next year, so it's exactly. going to leave some of these younger guys to really compete. That's a great ball by Cody, right on that head pin. And not much to show for it. Tough to do much worse than a 5 Dear 7 Dear Lord, 10. <laughs> 5 7 10. He's got some wood that'll maybe flip around. I mean, you almost have to just try to kick the 5 into that the 10, five. but I'm worried that your ball wouldn't, wouldn't... The wood is not in a good enough spot to have helped with the 7. I don't he know. gets one. Nate yeah. runs down another spare. A very difficult leave. One, three, five, eight. Just with no wood, it's not an easy leave not at, at all. all. You have to be full at the same time and Actually, drive that ball straight back, and he did. It's something to look at in this match, and it is early in this match, but it was a 2-10 that was bowled in our first event oh. of the season. Of course, the team that has the highest score, highest qualifying score out of our three stops gets a bye in our Tournament of Champions, and that buy, of course, is huge. It means you only have to bowl one match to win rather than two. So both of these teams not only bowling against each other, but both bowling to try to beat that target score of 210. Yep. Nate looking for three in a row, which would have given him the shot at the bowling balls. Uh, you know, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that by the end of this season, his name will be in that drawing, but uh, hey, he wants to get it in early, right? That's right. And of course, folks at home see that orange pin on lane 10 right now as the lane resets. And our, this season, if kids are able to get a strike with the orange pin as the head pin, they'll also be entered into that raffle. They do it in their 10th box because it's our 10th season. That'll get you bowling balls outright, as well as a few other assorted prizes. We've got bowling pins and some other fun goodies. We'll autograph that pin for them. We're happily, good like that. Happily. Please put autographs in front of us, I say. So Cody, looking for an out. A little off, Nate trying to leave himself one. Just a little off, so he's gonna need this 10 here to tie Michaela. Great out by Cody, awesome ball for the eight. Nate looking to reel this one in, and he does. Pair of 60s for Tortolot and Fontaine. Bowden and Gerard have a little bit to come back from, and but next we've got 
Smoke the shoe, Rob, and it'll be I'll be competing against Brittany Flood when we come back. All right, stay tuned. Hello, welcome back to Candle Pit for Kids. I'm Dan Goth here. We're here in the Smoke the Shoe segment, and I am here with Brittany Flood. Yep. I called you Courtney, but Courtney's your sister. You guys competed together today to try out for our show, right? Yep. Did either of you come close to making it? No, not really. But uh, one of the benefits of not making it is you do get a chance to participate in this segment where you stay and watch, and we've got a giant crowd today. And if I put your name, you end up up here, you get to bowl one box against me for a potential to win gift cards. You know how it works, right? Yep. All right, I'll, I'll go on the right, you go on the left, we'll go one box at a time, and if you beat me, you're gonna win. Congratulations, good luck. We're gonna let uh, Rob announce with somebody here. That's right, we've got Becky Halvadel with us. She's gonna be competing in our next match. Who do you like in this matchup, Becky? Who are you rooting for, Shu or Brittany? I'm, I'm rooting for Brittany. Any reason? Because, well, I like I like seeing people beat you, so. Me too. That's one of my hobbies is watching Shu lose at things, so. This is going to be tough for Brittany to come back from, but she can tie to do it too. Shu's on a single pin. What's, how are you feeling with single pins? I don't like single pins. You don't like single pins? Why not? Because they're hard to get, like, it's yeah. just like, you just got to get it perfectly on, like. It's a big test. Shu gets the 10. So Courtney needing all of these for the tie to smoke the shoe. She's oh! on that head and just missed. So great try nice by Miss Flood. Thank you for joining us, Becky. We will see you next match. Stay with us for the second half. Welcome back on Candle Pin for Kids. Michaela Tortolot's on lane 11. Go get it, Michaela. That was fun. <laughs> Couldn't run down that single on the first nah. ball. To you folks at home saying you should have played the oh! wood strike <laughs> by Marissa Bowden, backdoor style, on a spare, mind you. Now she's got sort of, I know we say that she can get a raffle ticket for bowling balls by throwing a double strike or three marks in a row, so. That's right, plenty of chances spare here. Or a strike here. Strike, she qualified twice. We give her two tickets that's or one. That's true. We'll so you look at this out. match, and although it's a very large difference, that's the way you start a comeback is with a hammer. So let's see how Marissa does on this one. Oh man, Marissa bowling so well. She so did. Well. Marissa's high single is a whopping 123. Tell you what, <laughs> she's on the big her way. Ones. That's right. <laughs> Marissa off the headpin, but hey, that's where her strike was. Oh, so. and she got an extra pin. Another extra action. So hey, yeah, this one's for three in a row. This can definitely go. Marissa's just off it. Nice bid. She got the count though. She did. Michaela now, a lot of wood to play to go for her 10. Michaela's high single on the other end is a 128. Wow. Which she keeps seem to approaching on our show every time. I'm wondering what that is down there on lane 10, something on the deck. Almost looks like the heel of a shoe down there on the deck. I think that sweep's gonna knock it into the back. <laughs> That's about the only reason Bowden didn't get three marks in a row. Some mechanic in the back stop got it. the shoe. This Man, it comes to mechanics, speaking yeah, of that. So maybe that was Maybe it. he lost his... Uh, Rag or something. <laughs> something. Another great ball. Both bowlers just a tiny bit off the head pin. We have four horsemen and the four horsemen with the nine. Similar leaves because some wood help on ten might help a little. Couple in back on 11 too, I believe. Oh, I didn't even see them, Rob. Yeah. A tough angle here. Now both bowlers looking for outs. Both bowlers, uh, barring anything shocking, heading for around 100 or better. So getting near the end of this one, Marissa Bowden's got a lot of other athletics that she competes in, basketball being one of them, also cheering. That doesn't surprise me. I mean, look, at she's in great shape. It's true. Oh, we have an orange pin here on lane 10. Marissa's on it. Ooh, man. Tell you what, Nate Fontaine knows something about that leave before the six pin fell. That's I watched true. him when he was on lane 10. He had that leave twice in three boxes earlier before this match started. Two ugly ones for both of these guys. Just off there. So now both bowlers looking for outs. Woody couldn't believe it. Stunned. Michaela getting the nine. It's one box left. Both bowlers looking like they're going to get 100. Both, uh, I'd be shocked if Bowden didn't. She only needs a five. She's to in lock great one shape. Up. Michaela will need the pin. So the Michaela and Fontaine team heading for that. Uh, what was the total they're trying 210 to beat? Two ten is the goal. They're definitely so heading. They're, they're on their way. In good shape. One mark, basically. What's 
impressive and a statement to the talent of the bowlers we're getting on Candlepin for Kids this year is it was a 113 and a 110 bowled by our young ladies in the last match. Right now it looks like we're going to get a couple hundreds. Michaela right on that yeah. spare carries the seven. Arm pump. Great ball by Michaela and she is pumped. She should be. That's a huge mark, especially when going for that target score. We do have the hundred for, for Marissa Bowden. just off. She gets just the hundred. Michaela now looking for the big finish. And what is her average? Marissa's well average is 88. Nice Michaela puts two on at the end for a 103. Fine, bowling three marks apiece. One Both strike, sides. two spares each bowler. So now Nate and Cody Girard stepping up. Girard is getting his balls out from underneath the lane. So Nate is going to need, I mean, the match looks a little lopsided right now in favor of Fontaine and Tortolo. But Nate's focused on not only winning the match now, but throwing a 48 or better for this half to try to take top seed. That's a great way to start. Meanwhile, on the other end, I want to keep my eye on Cody because you can tell this kid has some real natural talent. I'll say nine drop. And it's going to be interesting now that he's got that first half out of the way. These are the... Uh, Nate's actually waving Cody to go ahead for his shot. <laughs> And Cody, oh, nice That's bit. the areas that is tough if you're a new bowler, making single pins. Tough it mistake. is tough. Yeah. Ooh, what a wow, try. That ball almost bounced the ball right Give an odd little bounce. So now Cody going for the 10. There's a, a lot of ways that Nate can remind you of one of the best bowlers Candlepin for Kids has ever had, Jonathan Boudreau. But one of the ways he reminds me of him is he has a naturally very fast pace. It's true. When he's bowling in the qualifying, his father is constantly telling him, slow down. He's finished with the whole half on the person next to him in the second box. I was going to say one of the things you certainly wouldn't see Jonathan Boudreau do is wave a person along. <laughs> Nate's now facing pin. that orange pin. And he's right in, in that there. pocket. What a try. Fantastic ball. Now looking to run down those two. He has a future as a traffic director. It's true. Nate looks Look right that. on oh it. Goodness. Maybe full it was. Is there? You can be too good, and that's what he was. He was right on that pin. And he's got that ball that kind of moves so cross good. lane left to right. You thought that he doesn't have to be that light in order to pick up that shot. It's true. I'm continuing to pin, though. Such a slow ball. I mean, he's 11 years old. He hasn't, you know... It's not very muscular yet, no. and it's hard to pluck that front pin out. Usually True. something bounces to the side, the ball, the pin. Nate had a great first ball going in his first half. He was averaging seven pins on his first ball, and now in the second he's gotten, I believe, a seven and an eight. So he's way above the typical rate, and he's doing it again. Another first ball right in that pocket. And we're sitting here with our official statistician for this one, Billy O'Malley. He's got, I can't even see. He's, like, he's doing Sudoku over here to my left. He's got numbers all over the place in a grid. And the new Bill James. Yeah. Nate Fontaine on it. Nice. Little, little bouncing. Cody looking little to get himself a 10. And we, our contestants need dances. <laughs> like Ray Lewis coming exactly. onto the field. Cody is also a baseball player. His parents are telling me that he's got the arm for this game. And you see a lot of baseball players trying bowling, going back and forth. Nate looking for the fill. Getting a little action off that sidewall. Cody now, love to see him get a mark. He's got a great ball there. And this is the this is the type of mark I expect him to make as opposed to a single. A nice plank in front, it takes a little pressure off you. Just a lot go of different hit the places wood. it can go. You just try to hit it. He's, He's gonna, gonna hit, it. hit it. What and a shot! Cody Gerard's got the first mark of his candle bin for kids' career. The Schwami predicts which ones he makes. Okay, shoot. Alright, alright. That's pretty good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Settle down. So Nate at 103. Nate is going to need a five box in order That's, to yeah. put himself currently in first. But remember, we've got one more event, right. so the higher the better. And it's in a fast house. That's true. Nate's on that head pin. Who so, will win our third event? That's up for grabs. That is up for grabs. Everybody had their eyes on Cole and Nate so far. We've got a few other young guns stepping up. And Sage and Michaela. Now you take out those ones, literally anybody could win Look this last. Look at this. Oh, man. Oh, wow. That was, that was a, great a beautiful try. try. So accurate. One of the most accurate people you'll ever see, little Nate Fontaine. Now also, give Cody credit on this one. His average is 65. And he's, he's already, got, already got it. He's going to get it by about 10. And he bowled way above that today with a 223. So Cody's been over his average all day. But it's Michaela toward a lot of Nate Fontaine. They avenge their first loss of the season. They might get some revenge in the Tournament of Champions. Stick with us. Let's see if any of them can hit the high-low jack.
Go get him, Michaela. Go get him, Michaela. The difficulty of having so many kids here uh, is one of them kicked out our power cord for our microphone. <laughs> Could have been worse if Michaela gets the high hope jack. What a shot. Glad we had oh. audio for that one. Michaela Tortolotti jumping happy. up and down. Oh my awesome gosh, shot she's so by Michaela happy. Tortolotti. Your turn to try to follow that up, Cody. Did you get the five gun in this game? No, it's fine. Cody right, Gerard's turn There is now. one on five gun. Go ahead, Cody. No, he's got it. Cody Gerard on lane 10 right now. Going to see if he can duplicate Michaela Tortolotti's shot. That gives her an extra $50 on her gift card. Look oh, he's on it. it! Oh my god! What a shooter! Two oh in a row! God. Unbelievable! Oh my god! Cody Gerard has been doling for two weeks and he makes a shot that so many legends never made. Cody Gerard, what a shot! So now it's time to see if Nate can do it. We've got a person in back getting the five pin. Cody Gerard, come back here. Cody, just made that shot. How did you do it? What are you feeling? I don't know. I was just pretty happy after I made it. I would be pretty happy too. Congratulations on matching Michaela. Nate Fontaine is going for it now. We can't have three, could we? Oh. What a try. Nate guaranteed he would hit it to me between commercials. Unbelievable. Boy, he's so accurate. I mean, he put the head pin like nobody's business. He's, but. he's gonna get another shot if he tries out in the older age group of the second wow. stop. $100 which, an extra prize is won by these kids, including the newcomer. Stop. Two weeks of bowling, and he just won 50 extra dollars on a shot that, like you said, I can't make it. Unbelievable. So awesome bowling from our youngsters. We'll talk to them about what they just did after the break. That's awesome. Bogey Lanes features one of the top youth programs in the game, and as they look to join the international community, we talk to our community with a trip in the gutter. I like the environment. It's fun to see all the kids bowling, and uh, you have a shot to be on TV. So. We do a lot of the tournaments in... We do the one in the spring and the one in the fall, and we'll go in the Canada in March for the second time. I just have a lot of fun bowling. Bowling's my favorite sport. Uh, well, I've been bowling a lot more, at least three times a week. Um, got a lesson from my coach, um, Bob Brown, so yeah, it's just it's just all coming together. It's different, but I get I don't like people watching me, so it's like pressure, but at the same time it makes me do better. I know this time, this is my time, and I'm not going to lose this time. This is the one? This is the one. Welcome back to an intense match of Candlebin for Kids. Shu, you got the runners up. This is amazing, Rob. I always traditionally get to interview the runners up, but I've never had so much to talk about as this time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm long winded anyway, right? That's true. Marissa, fantastic bowling, three marks. How did that feel? Good. I mean, you bowled great today in the tryouts, too. Uh, how many times have you tried out for our show? Once. This, this is it? One time? Yeah. Do you think it's easy? No. <laughs> you would think so? You made it look easy today. Were you nervous at all? Yes. How long have you been bowling for? I've been bowling since I was two. Oh my god, since you're two. And how old are you now? Eleven. So you've been bowling almost ten years now. Um, what do you think the most difficult part of this game is? Just hitting, like, the best you can. Does pressure make you bowl better, or is it? Is it? does it sometimes get to you? It makes me bowl better. I would say it does, huh? Three marks in the... I mean, that score you guys hit would win some of these shows. A, a hundred is fantastic for your first time under the light. And you made a good try at the at the extra jackpot, too, huh? How'd you like having this guy for a partner? Do you think he's pretty good for just two weeks of bowling? Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? How, how, how much do you think you averaged after two weeks? Probably, like... 60. <laughs> That's about what he's doing. That's amazing. Congratulations. That was some of the best bowling I've ever seen anybody bowl. Uh, fantastic for first time on the show. And Cody, how does it feel? I feel good. Is this sport just easy for you? Are you a natural? Natural. <laughs> what other sports do you do? Baseball, and this is the second sport. You think uh, maybe baseball helps you on this? Do you do pitcher or outfield or something where you use your arm strength? I do pitcher. So there's probably some skills you can take from that. Strikes are good in both, right? As a pitcher and bowling? Yes. How did it feel going up there to get the 1710? Do you have any thoughts that you were going to make it? I thought I was going to not. I didn't know I was going to make it, but then after I saw the, all the pins go down, I was happy. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. A lot of bowlers who have bowled on TV, like Rob was saying, Adults who have been on the old show have tried for that shot 20, 30 times and never made it. You're one for one. You're 100%. Make you feel good? 
Yes. You want to say hi to your mom or anybody before we turn this over to Rob, to the camera? Hi, Mom. <laughs> You, Mom, you got somebody to be proud of here. I think we're going to be seeing more of him on the show in future years. Rob, you're with the champs. Try to outdo that. Man, I certainly hope we see him in future years. I'm with the champs, Nate Fontaine, Michaela Tortolot. Nate, we'll start with you. You finally did it, man. You've been coming back for years now, finally going to the Tournament of Champions. What's going through your head? I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, uh, last match, I was, I guaranteed myself and Michaela, or whoever, ver whoever teamed up with me, would win. I knew I, I knew I, I was so, I had so much confidence. I knew I would just win, and they also guaranteed me the high old jack that she got. So you're close. You're regular Joe Namath up there. So you drew Michaela Tort a lot again. Do you feel like that helped you out since you guys have bowled together already? Uh yeah, we're like I think we're the greatest partners. <laughs> Well, you're going to get to try to prove it in the Tournament of Champions, and you may get the chance to go up against the team that beat you the first time, Cole Fry and Sage Johnson. You actually beat their score, so as of right now, you've got a bye. We'll see what happens at the third time. Would you like a rematch against them, and what do you think? How do you think it would play out? I would like a rematch because um, because last time I just was robbed, and I would have gotten to the Tournament of Champions if it wasn't for the pins and stuff. I I got so many splits, and I just just, just didn't get any luck. So you're going to have a second chance. We'll see how you do. Michaela Tortolot, you've been coming for years and you've proved how good of a bowler you are. In two shows now, you are averaging a 106 on our show. That's impressive. Do you feel like you're getting better all the time? Yes. How is that happening? Are you practicing more? Are you getting tips from anybody? Is it coaching? What's letting you improve so quickly? I think it's just coaching. And who are your coaches and how do they help you out? Danielle Ariel and Ariel. Do they cheer you on? What do they do to, to get you to the next level? They just help me when I'm in a slump. Well, it doesn't look like you're in a slump now. You're as hot as any bowler out there right now. And to show just how hot you are, you go and make the high-low jack. <laughs> what was that like? Well, take us through the entire box and afterward. Well, I was thinking, I know that I never make this shot, though I think I'm not going to make it this time, so I just made it. Practice makes perfect, so congratulations. You're going with $100 worth of gift cards, and you're going to get the chance for more in the Tournament of Champions. So congratulations, guys. We will see you guys later on in the year, and that could be an epic showdown. Don't want to look ahead. Could but be. It's been great already, and don't want to look ahead, but, man, would that be something to watch. Yeah, Rob, I'm gonna, I know you usually ask me for parting words or parting thoughts. I'm going to do something I haven't done before. I'm going to throw one more question at our champs. Do you guys have anything you would want to say to Cole Fry or Sage Johnson right now? Um, you're going down, Cole, even though we don't have any rivalries, okay? <laughs> <laughs> anything? What he said? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe there will be a rivalry starting up between Cole and, and, uh, and uh, Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> I wanted to call him Hunter. You can, uh, Na Nathan and Hunter have had the rivalry for so long, I wanted to call him Hunter. Well, speaking of Hunter, we're seeing him in the next match, and you can Good tell, transition. Uh, you can tell Bill Belichick doesn't. Coach some of these guys. Nate's no, pretty free no, with the words, and it sure words. makes things entertainment. But yes, Hunter's in the next match, and a few other old friends are too. So we hope you stick around for that. On behalf of the entire Candlepin for Kids staff, thank you for watching us here. From Bogey Lane, a giant thank you to them as well. He's Dan Gauthier. I'm Rob Taylor. Thanks for watching. Candlepin for Kids, everybody. <laughs> Camera's all yours. Okay. Okay, so we really just wanted to say uh, we love Coach Danielle. She's our favorite coach ever. She's the best. Yeah. Who are some of your friends in the league? You want to say hi to him on camera? Um, okay. No. All right, we're here with Cody. Cody, this is your first Candleman for Kids event, right? Yes. What do you think so far? I think it's pretty good for my first time. Yeah, you're my friend. <laughs> hi, okay, okay. How are you bowling today? Horrible. <laughs> What's going wrong? Oh, no. 